Luke here with the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel. Today I'm going to show you all the different ways I know to start a fire without matches. Now some of these methods are more primitive technology survivalist style and others are more MacGyver style, but all of these methods are fun. And while I don't claim to be a master of all of these methods, I think you're going to learn something new and you're definitely going to have a good time. Okay, the first method I'm gonna show you is my favorite. It is so simple and it's awesome. All you need is a cotton ball, a little bit of leftover soot or ash, and some elbow grease, and we're gonna make this thing burn. I'm going to unwind the cotton ball, just like that, okay? I'm gonna take a little bit of this ash, and I'm gonna sprinkle it right down in here, and roll it like a burrito, as tightly as I can. I'm gonna fold over the edges so it can't come out the sides. I'm gonna take about half the cotton ball, maybe three quarters of the cotton ball, and then just tear it off. Okay, and then I'm gonna take this other piece of two by four and we're gonna shape it. Just do this three or four times until it's formed enough that it doesn't unravel when you roll it the other direction. Now I'm gonna sandwich it between the two two by fours. I'm gonna start rolling. Just keep going until you see smoke. See that? Hold it long ways like this. It encourages the ember to grow. Then, there you go. How cool is that? So I've been trying this method on and off for the last six months and doing it with cotton balls is pretty easy. I got it on like the third try with cotton balls. Doing it with paper towels or toilet paper, it's possible. I've seen other people do it but it's much more difficult. Whenever you're trying to make a fire from an ember, you need something that's really highly flammable that you can put that ember inside and then it'll burst into flames, okay? Uh, jute works really well and you can unravel it and make it into a nest, but I'm a dirty cheater and I like to do it the easy way. It is ready to go. You put an ember in that and that'll burst into flames. There you go. Now I'm going to show you a method on how to accidentally start a fire without matches. Now you'll notice behind me I have all of these axes. Uh, I like to polish them and preserve them with linseed oil. Just this basic boiled linseed oil that you get at uh, most hardware stores. And if you read the back of the label carefully, it'll tell you to never leave oil soaked rags laying about because they can spontaneously combust. Apparently what happens is when you soak a rag or a paper towel in linseed oil and expose it to air, a chemical reaction occurs, something called like polymerization or something like that, and it gives off heat and that heat gets more and more and more until it bursts into flame. And we're gonna see if we can make that happen without burning our house down. All right, I got this uh, old kitchen towel here. We're gonna get this thing soaking. Polish my spear. Oop, just put a hole in the ceiling. You know what this experiment needs? More linseed oil. Now if you wanna see me making all these spears and axes, Definitely check out our playlists. We have forging playlists and axe restoration playlists. All right guys, it's a cold windy day here. We're gonna take all these oily rags, put them in this cardboard box, and sit them on the forge and see what happens. It's been two hours, 47 minutes since I put the rags in this box, and it's starting to smoke actually. Look at that, there's smoke coming out. I'm just gonna leave that uh, here and we're gonna just see what happens. Well, we're just past the three hour mark and there's a lot of smoke coming out of that box. You can smell burning oil. So uh, we'll see, we might have uh, flames any moment now. There we go guys, four hours, 25 minutes. This thing lit up like a candle. Uh, whew, starting to melt my GoPro. <laughs> and that is why you have to be really careful how you store and dispose of oily rags. There's a lot of fun ways to start fires with batteries and hopefully I'm about to show you some you haven't seen before. All right guys, here's a classic. Steel wool and a nine volt battery. Just put it like that.
There you go. If you try doing this with any of the other standard type batteries, they won't ignite the steel wool. Unless you take multiple batteries, usually about three or more, put them end to end, and then they'll light the steel wool. Next, I'm gonna show you the fire piston. The fire piston ignites a fire by super compressing air. When you compress air suddenly and violently, it heats up to the point where you can ignite an ember. You can see here this part slides in there and it makes a really tight seal. In the tip of the piston is a little bit of char cloth. Char cloth is just charred cloth. You take some of this stuff, you burn it up, make it into charcoal. The hardest part about the fire piston is getting the ember from here into your tinder and getting it to a flame. It's a very, very delicate ember. There we go. Ooh. Now you can make these fire pistons out of wood. And there's lots of videos online on how to do that, or you can buy them. This one was made by a company called Baskook. I'm not sure how practical of a tool this is, but it sure is a load of fun. Let me show you one of my favorite ways to start a fire. Now, if you're in the woods in a survival situation, you find this very specific type of tree. Look down into the root system and find where I've stashed a bottle of potassium manganate and glycerin. And you can use this to start an amazing fire. Now, potassium manganate is a very harsh oxidizer you can find in most hardware stores. It's used for water filtration systems. And glycerin is a common ingredient in homemade soaps and shampoos and things like that. If you mix the two together, you'll get fire. Now, if you don't have glycerin, apparently you can use sugar too, but the results are not as good. All right guys, classic flint and steel here. Another great way to start a fire. With flint and steel, there's a couple things that work really well. You got cotton balls. And then you got steel wool. And you can see of the three, the jute probably burns the best. Now, we've got three different types of flint and steel. So first off, this is the blast match. You go and you put the steel onto the ferrule rod like that, and works absolutely great. And then you've got the kind with the magnesium strips here. And get it up into a little line there. There you go. Now I bet a lot of you guys are wondering what happens if you ignite the entire magnesium bar. One of the more challenging primitive fire building techniques is the fire plow method. You absolutely need bone dry dead wood. You can't have any green wood. You can't be wet at all. So you can see I took the pocket knife and whittled this down to a bit of a, an edge there. Make a little groove to run, rub the stick up and down. So once you get a good groove going, you need to find a spot to put your jute.
Over the years, I've tried this method a half a dozen times, and I've come close. I can always get smoke, but getting an ember, getting an ember that's worth the darn is hard, and it really is an upper body workout. But all you need is a pocket knife and a couple pieces of dry wood to give it a go. So definitely give it a try. It's a challenge. All right, I'm gonna show you another primitive fire making technique, the fire saw. This is one that you use with bamboo and it just so happens that I have a 20 foot long piece of bamboo from another video I did. Get a long piece of bamboo and you want it long so that you can go and put your leg on it like this. Then you take some of your, your tinder or jute, you slide it under there. You want it to be packed up in there so that it's touching the top. You're gonna start sawing. You're just gonna go nice and easy and just cut a groove. Once you feel like you got a good groove, then you start adding pressure. Four years of making YouTube videos has not prepared me physically for this. But you can see it, it burned the tinder really well. Almost made a ember. Came darn close to igniting it. Uh, but my arms are just toasted. Oh, the fire plow method in this just ruined me today. <laughs> There's another technique for the fire saw that's a little bit easier for the back. You take some shorter pieces of bamboo like this and you get a jacket or something to act as a pad and you lean against a board, a tree trunk, whatever you can. Then what you do is you take your tinder, you put it right in there, hold it down with your thumbs and then start working it. <sighs> Oops. You see, I can char it and uh, do a lot of sawing, but I'm not getting a good ember. Okay, so this fire starting technique is kind of cool. It was used by ancient Japanese swordsmiths to start their forge fires. You would take a cold piece of steel or wrought iron and you would beat it until it turns red hot. Oh, I'm really getting a workout today. It takes a fair amount of pounding and you really need a high quality anvil. I do not have a high quality anvil and I have put this massive dent in my anvil right there. It, it just is horrible. But there you go, that's how you start a fire with a hammer and a piece of steel. Another great method of building fire is to harness the power of the sun. We've all used magnifying glasses to burn leaves and ants and that sort of thing. And if you go online, there's tons of videos about people using ice or bags of water, or even polishing the bottom of an aluminum can to focus the energy of the sun and build a fire. Unfortunately, I picked the absolute worst time of year to, to do this part of the video because it's the dead of winter and we haven't had a sunny day in weeks. But I'm gonna show you one method uh, that you might not have seen that's pretty cool. You unscrew the flashlight and pull out the reflector. Take a piece of the char cloth, wad it up, and you're gonna put it in there. Then you're gonna tilt the reflector until the sun's rays are focused on the char cloth. You'll get it burning, get an ember going, and then you'll dump it in to your tinder. Probably the most well-known method of starting fire without matches is the spindle and board method. I've got this little store-bought spindle and board kit here just to kind of demonstrate for you. And it's got this bamboo uh, bow here with the, the rope wrapped around it. And it's even got ball bearings and a little handle here. And you hold this.
See, this is the trick. When you get smoke coming from your ash pile, that's when you know you got it. There you go. All right, we're gonna try to find some wood and do the spindle method for real. For the spindle, you need something long, straight, not too many knots, it needs to be bone dry, and it needs to be the right diameter. I tend to like to get something a little bit thicker than I want and then take my knife and whittle it down. You're looking for something that's a softer wood, like spruce or pine, or even some types of reeds you can use. If you're going to be doing the bow method, you can get away with about five, six inches of spindle. If you're doing the hand method, you really need 18 to 24 inches of spindle. All right, I got a little piece of wood in the drill. We're gonna do a test piece and see if we can get an ember. We can't get an ember with the drill, not gonna get an ember by hand. All right, so we made fire with the drill. We know it can be done. All right, we're gonna take the thicker pieces and cut them into boards. Now, if only I had an ax. Aha! All right, there we go, there's a the board. All right, there's a spindle, looks good, really straight. We're gonna make another spindle here. A little bit slimmer, a little bit shorter, but very straight. So I took a piece of green sapling and strung some paracord between it for a bow. And I took this little chunk of wood and burned a depression into it to make a handle. And uh, we're gonna see if we can't do the bow and spindle method. I've been at this for three hours. I've been getting tons of smoke. I've burned a lot of holes. That's all I got left of my spindle. And my arms are jelly. So uh, I think I'm gonna call it. If you wanna learn how to make fire in the woods with just a pocket knife in your bare hands, learn to do the spindle method without the bow, just using your hands. Put your thumbs on the top of the spindle, and go like this, all the way down, putting lots of downward pressure, then reset your hands and repeat. You want a really long, smooth spindle. It's got knots in it, it'll chew up your hands. If it's not long enough, you'll have to reset too often. I spent two weeks in law school just doing this over and over again with all sorts of different types of wood to try to do this. And after two weeks, while doing it in my living room, I succeeded and burned a hole in the carpet. Uh, my wife never lets me forget that. But what I learned is that when you have the right type of wood and the right technique and the right conditions, it happens very fast. You only have to reset about six to 12 times before you get an ember. It happens quickly. If you don't have everything just right, you can do this until the sun sets and you will never get it. So it's all about technique and which materials you use, not brute force there's always something new to learn and I've just recently discovered a new method. I was done videoing, almost done editing this video and I saw something online that was really cool. There's something called the rope lighter and it's an old timey uh, lighter that uses cotton rope. It's basically just a, a, a flint and steel and a rope dispenser and you char a little bit of cotton rope and then flick uh, some sparks onto it and it creates an ember on the tip of this rope and you can store it and use it to light things and then when you're done you can go and cap the rope snuff out the ember and store it in your pocket apparently it was used in like world war one and by sailors and anyway it was super cool and uh, um, maybe i'll go and buy one of these i just found some on ebay and uh, show them to you guys in some future videos but just wanted to throw that out there well, I hope you really enjoyed this video. I sure had a ball making it. Not all of these methods are super practical, but they're all a lot of fun. So thanks for watching, and don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every Saturday morning.
If you like this video, don't forget to check out the Outdoor Boys YouTube channel where we have hundreds of videos just like this. And don't forget to click subscribe so you can see other great videos every Saturday morning and hit that bell button so you'll get notifications. Thanks for watching.